everyone, today I'll be doing a solo Grandmaster run, Battlegrounds, Moon with Hunter. For my subclass, I'll be using Night Stalker. Here are the mods and fragments I'll be using in this video. For my kinetic, I'll be using Wish Ender. Next, I'll be using the Arc Glaive and a Rocket Sleepless. This is going to be the same loadout that I used from last month, but a much more cleaner run and some stuff I found out. This week, I decided to go for a cleaner run for the Hunter Voice Up class. This is going to be the same loadout as I done last month. This is more much of a cleaner run and some stuff I found out for this nightfall. And the reason why I wanted to make this video is just to have more of my rants about the battlegrounds. Because I read the state of the game and I'm not really happy about it. We'll talk a little bit about more, but before we start during this area... There will always be a barrier champion that will harass you and do ballerina twirls. Yes, not joking or over exaggerating. He also has the ability to shoot arc from far distance and shoot extremely accurately for some reason for this nightfall or for this battleground. So make sure when the barrier spawns, take him down as quickly as possible because you don't want to mess with him. He will spawn depending how many adds and the acolytes you take down. And this is going to be the platinum rank, so I do advise you not to pass a statue you can see from the far distance from the right side. If you pass a statue, you will you will spawn the Lucent Hive, which will mess up your platinum rank because there is a bug going on, which I don't think they're going to fix it. I have my doubts. When the barrier champion spawns, he will push and just make sure you stand on this mini bridge because he will try his best to shoot arc blasts and do ballerina twirls. But if you are on a void subclass or any subclass of which you choose, just make sure you use your super and then just spam wish ender. Now for this run to be much faster, you would just have to keep spawning the champions. Now I could have used a linear fusion rifle to make this part much more faster, but I just cannot bother myself dealing with this battlegrounds just to get a cleaner run. I don't plan on doing any creative loadouts for battlegrounds overall. Because if I am doing creative loadouts on Battlegrounds, then that means I support Battlegrounds and I completely agree, quote unquote, sarcastically agree that Battlegrounds should be in the Vanguard playlist. But I don't. I don't agree with it 100%. And now we have an unstoppable champion just stomping and walking slowly aggressively and now people don't like glaives i understand that but the thing about using a glaive for this season is you can actually use a glaive bubble and not get one shot from the final boss when he starts when the boss starts to, starts to use his psychopathic lightning attack or spams the lightning you can use your glaive bubble and then it won't one shot you that's the one thing I really like about using glaives, especially for this battleground. Now, I'm just going to keep taking down the adds as much as I can and make the champions to spawn. I can't really pass that statue there. And one thing I would like to mention, which I didn't show in this footage, is you can actually use Wish Ender to shoot down the turrets, a ship. I didn't do it for this footage, but I did on one of my test runs, but then unfortunately I got one shot because I ran out of glay bubble. But I just could not bother myself doing a much more faster run. And I wasn't really happy with my commentary last month, let's be honest with you. The last month commentary was me ranting about how I hate Battlegrounds. Well, half this and half that. And you know what? It is true. I don't like Battlegrounds. It is true that 
right at the moment for this week, everyone is quite upset, and we're just waiting for the show, the showcase for the for August twenty second. If you guys are wondering what I'm doing here, is I'm just using a rocket, sleepless, not sleeper, sleepless. So I do want to make sure, but as I said before, see these purple turrets are shooting you. you. You can use Wish Ender to take down the turrets. I actually did take advantage of using Wish Ender to take down the turrets. See, on last month's video, I didn't do this method. Until later on when I did another test run, then I'll wind up just using this method to take down the turrets. I do advise to just take them down so you can have an easier time going up the stairs, but I do advise you not to pass the statue. Or the opposite direction. If you want to get platinum rank, this is up to you and for the fire team. Like, if you don't really care about platinum rank, then all right, you know, that's on you and your fire team. But if you want to go for the platinum rank to get the rewards, then I recommend you don't pass the statue. You have to stay on this spot to deal with the champions and let them come to you. That's why I do recommend having a linear fusion rifle. Or in better case, why not just use sleeper? But then again, the surges is, I would say, void and arc. And that's another thing I don't like about surges. See, if you're using a opposite surge, let's just say solar subclass, your super is not going to do the extra 25% more damage. And your weapon that is solar is not going to do the extra 25% more damage. That means you have to stack three surges. But each of them costs three energy for solar for this season. So that means you have to use nine energy just to get a boost of 21% damage of DPS with your solar weapon. That's why this season everyone is just using whatever surges it tells you what to use, such as machine gun for battleground, such as void if it is void, surge of the week. It also could be strand if it is strand for this week, but I think for this week it's going to be void and arc. I don't think there's going to be a strand for Battleground, especially for this week. And then, of course, the famous for this season, since it's Arc season, right? Then you'd be able to use any Arc weapons. You can use Arc weapons and it will do a 25 extra, extra percent more damage. Now, if you are in a arc subclass or a void subclass, your kinetic will have an overcharge. So that means that your wish ender will do 25 percent more damage just because you're in a void subclass or a arc subclass, depending what are the surges for this week. Which is why I'm not bothered myself even using a stasis subclass for this season. There's no point. You don't really do that much damage. I mean, you can make it work, but is it really worth even using a stasis for this season? Especially using creative loadout battlegrounds. For me, I just refuse to use creative loadouts for this thing, this new activity that in the state of the game they have quoted that they will be adding more additional battlegrounds. even says it here on a state again, quote unquote, that such as battlegrounds that can later make their way into the Vanguard playlist along our strikes and eventually serve as new additions to the Nightfall and Grandmaster playlists. While this can come at a cost of utter content in a given year, we feel this exchange has been worth the extra investment for the overall health of our playlists. As a the result, will be or will have additional battlegrounds coming into the nightfall and grandmaster rotation in season 22 or 23 to keep players under toes before the final shape launches.
I don't even think they're going to be adding new strikes at all for this year. And they're just going to rehash Battlegrounds. Now, on my last video, we've been through a what is rehash. And rehash is when they actually just copy and paste and then just make it into a new content, a new activity. So basically, a Battleground that's not supposed to be a Grandmaster, they just... They just happen to copy and paste it, move it to the Vanguard playlist, and then copy and paste and add more champions. That's what's a rehash in the short term. But it is shocking that people do support Battlegrounds. I cannot believe it. I have read and watched streamers just to see their opinion. And there is 60-70% people that they don't like Battlegrounds. And then there is a 30% people that agree they want Battlegrounds on the playlist. Why? Why do people want Battlegrounds on the playlist? Since they're going to be adding more Battlegrounds on the Vanguard playlist, I feel like Grandmasters are just going to be ruined this year. It's already getting bad as it is. But anyway, if you see in this area, right, I'm just trying my best to take down bigger champions from far distance. I can't really pass the stairs. I have to lure them just to have this completion, just to make this easier and have the platinum rank. One thing you have to be aware is that you must take them down as quick as possible. If not, they will back away. And they will hang around with the other barrier champions and unstoppable champions. So you must take them down as fast as you can. If you have a linear, use it. I'm just using it rocket since I was. This was actually another test run to test out some new methods, especially dealing with the final boss. I'm not really looking forward for next season. I mean, we're going to have Battlegrounds again, and that means I have to use meta weapons, meta subclass, just to get it done and over it. I really cannot bother myself doing creative loadouts for Battlegrounds. I just cannot bother myself. This doesn't belong on a playlist. I don't agree with it. It doesn't belong on a playlist. You know, I have done this solo, Grandmaster version. I have done this on Fire Team. Even in Fire Team, people are still having trouble with the moon. There are players having trouble of getting platinum for this nightfall. All right, there are players having trouble at the final boss for this season. And for me, it just doesn't seem challenging. It just seems a bit of a drag. And it's not enjoyable. It's not fun. For me, it's boring. Battlegrounds is boring. And yes, someone can argue and say that is the poorest excuse you can you can make blitz of saying the reason why you don't like Battlegrounds is boring. Well, there's more into it as in boring. Why have Battlegrounds, especially let's just let's just put for Mars, for example. Why have Battlegrounds Mars when you could have Will of a Thousands? Nightfall Strike. Fighting a giant worm, alright? Why have Battlegrounds Mars when you can fight a wizard as strange terrain? And then for this season, why have Battlegrounds the moon when we can have Sathathan's song from Titan? Since Deep Dive is from Titan and I thought they were going to bring Titan back. Maybe Sapphire and Song should have been the nightfall for this season, but no, they said, no, Blitz, we're going to put Battlegrounds because that's what people want. 
Now, before I talk more about this, I do advise you to skip these champions. And when you do skip these champions, you can still get platinum rank. The two champions here, skip them. Why? Well, one, you kill them, you don't get points. Two, when you kill them, you don't get revives. There was some weird bug dealing with these two champions. So I do advise you to skip them. So once you do the method where you don't have the loosen hive to spawn at the, at the first encounter, make sure you skip them because there's really no point of you dealing with those champions. Why waste so much heavy, so much ammo when you can just skip them and then still get platinum? There's a bug going on with those two champions. You saw there that it was zero times and you don't get any points and you get no revives. It's a bug. A odd bug. It's like I said, they made, they just copy and paste, they just rehash battlegrounds, all right? They rehash it and then they just copy and paste all these champions. You know, they just put as much champions as they can on Grandmaster version and make it into a Grandmaster for the playlist. And that's what I said. That's one of the reasons why I don't think battlegrounds don't belong in a Vanguard playlist. And I, as I said before, they should have strikes. The Sunset Strikes, Destiny 1 Strikes, if they don't have the resources, quote unquote, the resources to make new strikes. I do advise to pull back here. Once you duck the orb, which you can get the moat from the wizard, take down the bear champion. Because they're in this part, you're going to have another champion that will spawn. And, of course, another unstoppable champion. So usually there's going to be one barrier champion, one unstoppable. And you must take down these champions before you resume of collecting the moats. Now be aware, when you do kill the wizard, you must pick up the moat as fast as you can because the moats have a timer and they will disappear, which means that you have to take down the wizard again and again because you have to, you have to pick it up. So make sure you lure the champions on this spot. This probably seems the safest. So the, mo the more moats you dunk, the more of the loosened hives will spawn. And they're mostly the hunter hive. Now I am going to pull back. And I do, I do want to share that there will be time skips at the boss fight. Especially enemy doing DPS at the wizard to find a boss from far distance. So make sure you grab the moats as much as you can. And I'm just going to be waiting for the nutter wizard to spawn. Now everyone has their own method. I know for fire team, you can just collect the moats 2-2 two, two, and then just dunk it. But for solo version, it's a bit different. You have to make sure you dunk the orbs at the right spot, depending what you prefer. For me, I don't want the loosened hive to bother me from the middle. So I am going to be dunking the orb or the moats from the middle first. Also be aware that when you try to take down the wizard, it will pop a smoke. And it may slow you down or poison you a bit. So the max of the moats you can pick up is three. So if we do the math of the fire team, it would be so much easier compared to the solo run. And depending how many moats you dunk, there will be a spawn of loosened hive and champions. That's why I do recommend when you dunk the first moat, or we can call them an orb, you must take down the first barrier and unstoppable champion. Now for the fire team be different, as I said before, you would just focus on taking down the loosened hive once you dunk the orbs and then the champions. And you wouldn't really pull back and stand on that spot where I was. It would be entirely a different method. 
for solo wise, I just decided to go for this pot. One thing I like to mention is when you do dunk around four moats, there will be a shrieker that will spawn. They spawn around two times for this section. So make sure you pull back and then just you take advantage of Wish Ender. Then you could take down the wizards. Now the wizards like to float left and right, so I'm just trying to take him down with Wish Ender. It will take some time because they do like to dance a bit to the left and to the right. But the final boss is a hundred times worse than this itty bitty wizard. Trust me. She will dance to her heart out when you are trying to do precision shots with the Wish Ender. So now I'm just going to wait for the wizard to spawn again. It's an infinite amount of wizards when you do take down and pick up demotes and for just one player for solo it's just three and the maximum you can pick up is three So once everything is good to go, I'm going to pick up the moat and I'm going to pull back and I'm just sliding for my life. Isn't this a fun battlegrounds? I mean, people like it. It's challenging, Blitz. It's challenging. Yeah, it's really challenging. And guess what? They're going to be adding more battlegrounds because people like it. Not me, I don't like it. I'm just really curious. I mean, who's telling Bungie that they should add more additional Battlegrounds? That, I am extremely curious of who is telling that Battlegrounds is such a great idea. They need to add more for new content. All right. I'm just extremely curious of who said it would be a good idea. I feel like this is going to ruin Destiny, especially for Vanguard, for PvE. Alright, so once I got three moats, I'm gonna back away. I'm just scouting, looking. I'm just trying to figure out where all the loosened hives. There's the hunter loosened hives from the left and the right. I'm just trying to look which ones I should go first. And I decided to go for left. When you do dunk the moats, sometimes you scare the loosen hive and he'll just go on his super. When he does that, starts to freak out, make sure you use your glaive, hide behind the wall, because even if you're invisible, the knives can still track you and they can one-shot you. They can. But there are times where it almost one-shots me, and I would just say that's based on luck. Because I ran out of invisibility, I'm just going to pull back a bit. So I'm going to be collecting the moats as always and pull back. I mean, this is just a fun way to collect the moats than the fire team, right? This is really fun. Having the best day ever. Happiest guardian ever. I can't believe they're going to add more additional battlegrounds. It just gets better, right? I do apologize, yes, this is really, really boring, but this is probably the only way I can deal with the wizards. I mean, it's infinite amount of ads on battlegrounds, which people like. I don't like it.
Once again, we're gonna collect the moat. Gosh, this just drags on and on. You know what's the worst part? The boss fight is gonna be really long. It's gonna be longer than this encounter. This is nothing. I'm just trying my best to be as nice as I can for this commentary. Because on my commentary last month, I was just going to mini rant. Alright, so once we have the wizard to shoot Ark at us, like a psychopathic freak. Use your rocket. Use your wish ender buff away. Or wish ender away and collect the moat. So now we'll have three. That's the maximum you can collect. Now, from what I remember, I am going to go from the right side, just to dunk the moats. So I'm going to wait my invisibility, so I'm going to do a mini time skip here. Once I get a mini break from drinking water, and I'm going to probably have more mini breaks of drinking water at the boss fight. I'm going to turn invisible, just dunk the moat, and be aware that the loosened hive can freak out and get scared and start to spam a super, try to find you. And there are times where they're not afraid, right? And then they're not going to use their super. So if you are low on visibility, you can also pull back here. I do want to mention that you can also pull back on this spot if you could not make it to the other opposite end. Now the reason why I'm at this spot is because the champions are going to spawn around 10 out of 12 moats. Around 10 out of 12, 10 out of 12, and with a Shrieker as well, there will be two champions that will spawn with the Unstoppable Champion and the Twirling Ballerina Barrier Champion. Just be aware that this Barrier Champion likes to twirl around and do dances just to impress you, but it's not. It will annoy you and it will just make you not want to play Battlegrounds at all. Because I had my super, I was prep, but last month I was not. Last month when I was doing this run, this, that berry champion that you saw me just took down, and it looked very easy, I'm not gonna lie. Last month, I had trouble dealing with that berry champion. He was just dancing left and right, doing twirly twirl, ballerina, left and right, hiding behind the bush, hiding behind the wall. I was just taking five minutes of my life dealing with the bigger champion. Dancing. Dancing. And dancing. Now make sure you take down this unstoppable champion. You can also use your finisher. I'm not sure why I didn't use my finisher. Maybe I was just being very cautious, over cautious for this part. Or because I was just frustrated of having to do this run again. And I'm gonna pick up some heavy and then pull back. We do have a shrieker, so be aware that we have a shrieker and loosen hives. Now this part's gonna be pretty tricky and the reason why I say that is because we're gonna have three loosened hives that can freak out and spam their super with the death of the solar knives that can track you. I pull back here because the Arcanites were shooting me and I just didn't feel comfortable staying on that spot. And yes, the wizards love to play hide and seek. So once everything is good to go, I'm gonna use Wish Ender, use my rocket, make sure I take him down. And then we're back to collecting moats. We only need two more moats. So I do recommend just collect one moat, dunk the left or the right, and then collect the last moat, and then just rinse and repeat. I don't recommend to collect three and then dunk the left or right one when you are 10 out of 12. Because the extra two modes are not going to count. Yeah, that's right. So even if you collect three modes, they're not going to count. You have to have one mode at the left side and one mode at the right side. So each of the modes is four. You need four in the left, four in the middle, four in the right. No matter what. All right. 
I wish there was a way where I can collect three modes and then just dunk all three at the right side, and then it will count at the left side as well. Like, why can't that happen for this Battlegrounds? But hey, like I said, Battlegrounds doesn't belong to Vanguard playlist. You know, I'd rather play Scarlet Keep over this. Alright, I don't even like Scarlet Keep that much. I'm not a fan of it too much, but I'd rather play that over this. I'm just staying here, just waiting for my invisibility so I can get this done and over it. One thing you can do is use Wish Ender to see how many Loosen Highs are on the left and right. Try your best to find the one that has the least. On this part, there was only one Loosen Hive, so I decided to dunk the mode here. Be aware that sometimes they freak out and they use their super, so I just stand behind this wall so it can calm down. And then once it's calmed down, everything's good to go, then I run, but then... I saw the Lucent Hive. You can see there, even in visibility, the Lucent Hive can still find you. They can still see you when you're invisible. I saw the Lucent Hive. It was about to use the Seeking Knives. So I decided to pull back, hide behind the wall or a bush. And then once he finishes his super, then I just get the hell out of there. Because I knew this Lucent Hive was going to use his knife and then one shot me. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want to waste 30 minutes of my life. Or 20 minutes of my life. So we finally are able to deal with this part where we have to collect one moat but take down the wizard. It's not great. You're probably wondering why I use my super. I use my super because I was already frustrated. I'm really tired of the wizard moving left and right. I already had to deal with that horrendous method of what wizards do at the final boss. And then this mini itty bitty wizard is doing the same thing that the boss does. Which I don't want to deal with, but I have to. Alright, I'm gonna wait for my invisibility... And make sure I get this done and over it. So I'm going to turn invisible and just dunk the last orb. Just remember, there's going to be three or two loosened hives that will be walking around like a psychopath looking for you. Now for this part, I only saw only two of them. Sometimes if you're unlucky, you get three. Now I got a little unlucky here. So just be super... Super careful when dealing with the Lucent Hive. If I didn't pull back and hide behind a wall, the Lucent Hive could have one-shot me. So now I'm just going to be collecting heavy and then just make my way to the next encounter. I'm going to do a mini time skip here. This is going to be the next encounter. We're going to be dealing with two unstoppable champions. A infinite shrieker. Even if you take down the Shrieker, which I will show very soon, it'll still spawn over and over again. Infinitely. Now do you see why I don't like Battlegrounds? If you're wondering what's going on there, Navi the Fairy turned evil and I decided to take him down. I sense Navi was going to try to one-shot me, so I had no choice but to stop. You know, I couldn't save the poor innocent Cabal, you know, my teammate. It was either try to save him and get one-shot by Navi the Fairy, or the Moth, or I sacrifice his death and take down the Navi the Fairy. Alright, that was two choices I had. I had to choose option B. So I'm going to be taking down these two Encephalo Champions. Make sure you use a Glaive. And yeah, this is going to take a while. I'm going to do a mini time skip here. It's already dragging as it is. After spending 30 seconds of my life, this is going to be so much fun now. For you guys, but not for me. This is not going to be fun. This is going to be torture. And me just talking to myself on this video saying why Battleground doesn't belong on a Vanguard playlist. Yes, I will complain about it until they do something about it. Until they change it or something.
has to be something good. All right. So I'm going to push and then turn invisible, back away. And I'm just going to go to my mini safe spot. So remember when I talked about that shrieker? Yeah, about that. Well, this shrieker will never die. Um, until you do enough damage for the final boss to take you to his next dimension. So even when you take down the Shrieker, he's still gonna spawn, respawn, again and again. No matter what, even if you use your super, anything. There are times where the Shrieker will notice me. It will try to shoot his void attack. I will have to take down the Shrieker, but then it will spawn again. So now during this part, I decided to just stand here and then just deal with the boss at this spot. I mean, that's the best I can do for now. I mean, that's the best I can do, guys. I'm not going to go all the way from close by to the wizard, have these arc knights shooting me, have these acolytes throwing fire at me, having the shrieker behind me. Spamming void and even though I take him down, he's gonna spawn again and again and again I mean, why would I want to waste my time and effort of doing a combo of dealing with the shrieker and acolytes When I could just stand here and then just wish ender away Now do you see why battlegrounds is belong to playlists on the vanguard playlist and it should just be strikes sunset strikes new strikes and destiny one strikes I'm gonna do many time skip after spending 8 minutes of my life, the Shrieker disappears, and now we're gonna go to the next encounter, dealing with the final boss, with Wish Ender. Yay! Blitz is tell the truth, Battleground sucks. I know, it's horrible. So one thing you can do for your fire team is you can actually use your super, and then start the activity, or start the boss fight. And now I'm going to go for a new method. Now this is really cool to use for a fire team or for solo. You can stand here and then just wish under away. Why stand on the left side making the boss going left and right dancing doing the cha-cha slide like that? And more complicated end of the boss throwing art grenades when you can just stand here, wish Ender away, and not care less of what's going on so much for this part. I do want to mention during the second phase of the DPS of the boss. I recommend you don't stand here. Yes, I know everyone's freaking out, but let's but you just said that this spot's really good. Yeah, it's good for the first phase and the third phase. Second phase, I don't recommend you stand here. You'll see why, and then I'll do many time skips of realizing that this is not a good spot. Make sure during the second DPS phase, after you take down the ghost of Sathathon minions, make sure you go immediately at the right side. And I have showed that method on my last month's video. So anyway, I'm gonna do many time skip here. This is gonna take a while. So just stand in this spot. They're in the first phase and the third phase. Second phase, recommend you need to go from the right side. Right side. After taking my sweet time, spamming my super, now we're gonna be dealing with the worst Mini boss you will ever encounter. Destroy the mini ghost of Sathathon. And what I like to do is go on no jutsu mode because Sasuke taught them some no jutsu moves where they spam infinite amount of chakra of lightning. A lot of lightning. Alright. And yes, that lightning you see, lightning strikes, if an amount of chakra there where it can one shot you. Now, one thing you can save yourself dealing with the lightning is the glaive bubble. During this part, I recommend you take down the champion as fast as you can. Take down the champion, and if there are acolytes shooting you, take them down a bit, try your best, 
to take them down as fast as you can and then take down the bear champion. Why? Because these champions, if you don't take them down, they're going to move around around the map in the middle. And you don't want them to move around all the way from the middle side because Savathon, the ghost, right? And during this part, it's just one ghost. Or clone of Sapathon. Or we're going to destroy the aspect of Sapathon, right? They're going to shoot Ark at you. And when I say the Ark, I mean from Lightblade. Do you remember how Lightblade, the boss, shoots this Kai Blast? Well, this one does the same thing. And you don't want to mess with this Ghost of Sapathon. Because you want to make sure you take down the champions at this spot. So highly recommend. Take down the champions as fast as you can. Don't bother yourself dealing with Sapathon at the moment. Once you take down the champions, then you can deal with Sapathon. What you can do over here is... You need to collect the Arc Staff. You can also teleport with the arc staff and you can slide far distance with the arc staff. Now I was just trying new methods dealing with this boss. You must time it correctly because this boss likes to spam his chakra, the lightning attack, every 10 to 11 seconds. Sometimes 9 when she feels like it, alright? She's very unpredictable. And it's really hard to really tell of when she's using her lightning chakra. Especially when there's two of them. One of them is not so bad. When it's two of them, it's really hard for your headphones to even notice which one is spamming their lightning first or not. Now I did test it out, but I haven't tested 100% how long. But if you leave them alone long enough and if they don't see you, they will all of a sudden stop spamming their lightning chakra. They would just float around left and right. I have not test out of how many, how long does it take for Sathathon to completely stop his lightning chakra and then float around. That I have not tested out 100%. So I cannot give you a guarantee of how long does it take for Sathathon to ignore you. And for me, it was around two minutes, but sometimes three minutes. It's really hard to tell. It's really hard to tell you guys because I have to do more testing. But at the same time, I really cannot bother myself doing more testing on this situation because I don't like battlegrounds. It's not fun. Now I do recommend for warlock for a titan you need to go in that spot that spot is probably the safest to throw the arc staff when the boss is half his health she starts to move around a bit all right so i'm gonna be grabbing the arc staff and you could just spam your teleportation i wish i would have done it two times but hey you know it was a test another test run and i just cannot bother myself doing a much more cleaner run so i'm gonna pull back turn and then just spam my arc staff. One thing I do want to tell everyone is the Sapathon can shoot arc at you, but the good news is you can easily dodge the arc high blast. The one thing will be really hard to dodge is the lightning, so just be very careful when dealing with the boss or the mini boss. So I'm going to be waiting for my invisibilities. I don't do many time skip here. So I decided to pull back because this wizard started to move or the Sapathon, my bad, not wizard. I heard Sapathon moving. So I decided to pull back. So during this phase, she likes to move around. All right. She is sometimes very unpredictable. So just be aware that this Sapathon can be extremely awkward, but for fire team, it's a different story. Solo, it's a bit different. 
So once again, I gotta wait patiently and see where is Sapathon because now she's moving around. She's being awkward. I want to grab the arc staff, but she's not letting me. I'm just spamming this emote just to see where she is. It looked like she was all the way from the back. And I don't think she's even close to the arc staff. So because of that and everything looks good to go, acolytes are also bothering me and harassing me. Doesn't look like she is any threat at the moment. So I decided to use my arc staff, try again. Just wait for my invisibility. You can also use the Graviton Flora Fit to have an easier time with the visibility. For me, I don't have the right stats to make the build. I have tried to see if I can go for that method. So for me, I had to farm another one. I did have a really good stat, a really good stat for my helmet, but it was sunset. I had to delete it. It had really good stats. But oh well, nothing we can do. We all had to take we all had to delete our god roll stat armor because it was sunset and then it wasn't good anymore. So now I'm just waiting patiently. Eventually this boss will calm down so I can grab the arc stuff. I noticed for this footage, this boss is a little bit more aggressive than my last month's video. My last month's video, she wasn't as aggressive as this one. I had to double check if the boss was going to spam his lightning. So that's why I was waiting patiently. And yeah, I know it's really boring, but it's really hard to tell because you have to hear the lightning to make sure you don't mess up. Because if I just rush and then not pay attention to the lightning, then I'm going to get one shot. So one thing I noticed is the boss was moving around and it didn't use his arc lightning. That's when I noticed that there is a way where you can make the boss not spam his lightning if it doesn't see you. If you hide long enough and it just floats around left and right. And you could just quickly grab the arc staff. That's what I noticed. And I did try to do this method during the second phase when there's two Sapathon. But it's really, really hard to do it. Because both of them are shooting lightning and you can't tell which one is doing it. If it's the left one or the right one. Is it the close one that stopped using lightning? Or is it the one that's far away from the right side? So this is the part where I regret it. So make sure you go from the right side. And when I say from the right side, I mean from the right platform. Right there where you see where there's these acolytes. Make sure you go over this spot because the biggest mistake is I stand on this platform thinking that maybe this would be a great idea. To do DPS at the boss, but no. This is a really bad idea. So remember, when taking down the first Sathathon, make sure you just quickly move from the right side. You don't go in the middle. You don't go at the back mini cheese spot where I'm standing. This is not really a good spot. She will hide behind the walls and she will pop your healing rift. Later on, I did realize that this is not a good spot. This was a test run. This is not good, so highly recommend you go from the right spot. Now, if you accidentally stand on this spot, which I'm pretty sure some of you will do it, 
Well, then the best thing you can do is stand from the left side spot. Stand on, go to the left platform to deal with the boss. If you accidentally stand on this platform during the second DPS phase for the final boss. So I'm going to do my time skip here. Make sure you go to this spot. Even, even if you try to go to the opposite direction, the wizard will stay in that place no matter what. During this phase. She will not move, which I was hoping she would move because I was trying to go to the opposite direction to see if she could move and back off on that safe spot. But she didn't. So I decided to go for this part. It's boring. I don't like this spot. Be aware that the boss can throw arc pulses at you. So be super cautious when standing on this spot. And yes, she will hide. And then float around again, back and forth. Back and forth. That's how she is, and this is why Battlegrounds doesn't belong in, a in the Vanguard playlist. I don't like it. It's boring. Yes, I said it. It is boring. Not enjoyable. Not fun. I would prefer strikes. Will of a thousands. Strange terrain. Festering core. Trues of probabilities. A garden world. Hollow layer. I'm going to do many time skip here. Alright, so I'm going to be backing up and then going to the safe spot. Sorry, I got stuck on this platform. I'm not really sure what I got stuck on, but it stopped me from jumping. So I'm going to go on this mini spot. And I'm going to be dealing with that. So this is when there's going to be two sapathons from left and right. You want to first take down the Sapathon from the right side. But first things first, take down the Ogre from far distance and crouch. Make sure your character is crouched so the Sapathons won't detect you. You don't want them to notice you because the one thing one thing's going to happen is they're both going to spam their Arc Blast at you. And yes, you can easily dodge them, but at the same time, it's pretty annoying. Very annoying to dodge both of them at the same time. You want to make sure you take down the acolytes that are on top of the platform from the right side. They're the ones that are going to mess up your DPS when you are grabbing the staff. One thing you need to do is take down the ogre from the far distance as well. Once you deal with that part, then you can just go ahead and go to the tunnel. And one thing I like to mention is you can also take down the Arc Knights that will mess up your DPS with the Arc Staff as well. So I was trying to deal with the Arc Knights. But if I could see them, they were hard to see from this angle because I didn't want these Sapathons to see me. That was the problem, by the way. And that's why I was being extremely careful when I was going on this platform. Of course, there is infinite amount of ads. I would say mainly acolytes, and they will, they will, sneakily go up the stairs, especially at the right side. You can see here, and definitely just be very careful. And I was just being patient right now. I was trying to see where are the arc knights because I really want to take them down. And console amuses. Sorry about that. Nothing I could do there. So once everything is good to go, I decided to just go in the tunnel and then just grab the arc staff. You must take down the Sapathon from the left side, from the opposite direction when you are standing on this spot. Now I'm trying to time of when Sapathon is going to shoot his lightning. And once I find out the time, then we're going to deal with 
Sathathon. Now, one thing that messed me up is the Arknights. So, remember when I was trying to take down the Arknights? This is one of the reasons why. The reason why I was standing on that mini cheese spot up there was because I wanted to take down this Arknight that's shooting Ark at me. Because it messes me up. I try to do emote just to see the lightning. Because sometimes I'm hearing it wrong. Maybe I'm hearing the opposite direction of lightning. It was really hard to tell in my headphones. So I decided to shoot and then once again just wait patiently. See when she's going to strike her lightning attack. Yeah, this is really boring. I know, this is a drag. Alright, so once she decided to strike her lightning attack, I quickly slide for my life. And then just use Arc Staff. So right now, I'm going to be using the Arc Staff just to see if I can get... Do DPS at the boss. She's in an awkward place. My goodness. Please. Just move. Oh, great. Guess I gotta go grab the Arc Staff again. So depending how much damage you do, eventually Sapathon will move. Will move up. And that's when you have to be really, really careful with the boss. Well, with the first mini boss. Because she can shoot Arc at you while you're shooting your Arc Staff. So once again... I'm going to wait patiently and patiently. And yes, this Acolyte infinitely will slowly go up the stairs. So I'm just waiting and waiting for Sathathon to strike his lightning. And for some reason, it's not doing that every 10 seconds timer. And like I said before, it looks like when Sapphathon doesn't see you or you're not shooting, then it stops doing his lightning. It was just a weird, awkward thing. I've been trying to figure out the time on that, but I haven't had time to do more testing. So now we're in a really good spot. We're throwing, shooting our arc staff, and then we gotta go and deal with Sapphathon again. Now one thing I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see if she moved. If she is moved and you can see her, then you have to be extremely careful and you have to time yourself when you're in the tunnel. Yeah, it just gets better and better, right? So everything seems to be alright. She's not there yet. So it looks like I can just grab the arc staff. So I just want to double check there because sometimes you're standing here like where I am and then Sapphathon from the opposite direction sneak attacks you. And yes, that was Navi the fairy. Sapphathon can shoot, shoot his archive blast at you while you're distracted and focusing on getting the arc staff. That's why I double check the opposite direction to make sure she's not there at the moment. So right now, I'm going to be using my arc staff. She's moving. She's being awkward. I mean, I mean, this is the best I can do, guys. I can't jump. If I jump, then Sapphathon from the opposite direction next to me is going to move. And it's just going to be painful and not fun. Now I'm waiting for the boss to move. To see if she's going to move or not. That's why I was being extremely cautious here and waiting. Being patient. And it looks like she moved. So I wanted to double check. That's why I turned invisible. Yep, she's there. Alright, so this is probably going to be the hardest part, in my opinion. Unless you're using Graviton Forfeit. This is when you really have to be very careful when dealing with the boss. You gotta time it really good. And when I say good, I really mean it. You gotta really time... The lightning to grab the arc staff from the right side or something I've been trying to do is I've been trying to wait for Sapathon from the right side to get fed up of spamming his arc chakra well it's lightning chakra right it's lightning 
so I can just easily grab the arc stab. I've been trying to test that out, by the way, but sometimes it doesn't work, and sometimes it works. Like over here, I noticed Sathathon completely stopped spamming his lightning, and then I grabbed the arc stab. And then once I threw my arc stab, then the Sathathon next to me started spamming his lightning attack. I notice when you hide and you stop moving for a while, it will stop using its lightning attack. After one or two minutes, not really sure. Didn't really fully test it out. So far, that seems to be a method that could work out. And yeah, this Sephathon's not happy. It will spam his Arkai blast at you. So just be super aware that it can do that ability. Now I decided to wait patiently because Sathathon from the opposite end was throwing, shooting Kai blasts at me. And then at the left side, I'm waiting for Sathathon from the opposite direction to stop spamming his lightning attack so I can easily grab the arc staff. And I'm waiting for my dodge at the same time. So I will be spamming my dodge and then see if the method works where the opposite direction, Sapathon will get fed up of using lightning and float away for a while. And then I could just grab the arc staff and not worry about the lightning strike. That was the method I was trying to go for and it was a test run. I was trying to see if it was going to work. Alright, so once I turn invisible... I decided to go and you could see Sapathon is ignoring. I waited for two minutes, around two minutes. She didn't spam her lightning attack and then I just focused on Sapathon from this direction. This method seems to be working but it's not fully tested. I need to do more testing but this season I'm not gonna bother myself. I cannot bother myself doing battlegrounds again and again and again and again and again. I don't understand why people love it, love Battlegrounds. I don't understand the reason. I don't understand the motivation of why it's such a great and amazing idea to have a rehash Battlegrounds on the playlist on the Grandmaster version. So I'm going to be waiting patiently right now. I didn't feel like I didn't feel like timing the lightning at all for the opposite direction so i'm gonna wait until sapathon from the opposite opposite side decides to stop and float away Alright, so I'm gonna go and turn it visible. I noticed the boss stop using this lightning attack, it flowed away. And then I quickly, quickly went to the tunnel and then just hide and shoot, hide and shoot. I don't recommend you just stand still. She will spam her Kai Blast. So once I defeated the boss and I got a challenge completed. Well, great. I don't, I'm not sure if I'm happy about it or upset about it. But I'm going to go to the opposite direction. And this is the part where things are going to be easier. One thing you must be aware of is the acolytes. The acolytes can sneak up on you. So make sure you use your rocket. Or if you don't have any rockets, use your super. Don't save it for the final boss, it's not worth it. Just use your super if you need to use your super dealing with the acolytes, dealing with the ads that sneak up on you, dealing with the evil Navi the fairy trying to one-shot you, dealing with weird bugs of teleportation where arc knights shoot you and then they shoot through the staircase, or acolytes throwing fire at you. Use your super if you must. If you must, do it. Don't save it for the final boss. Not worth it. What's more worth is your survivability. 
focus on clearing the ads if they are in the way. If they are doing sneak attacks, you can see here. And focus on that. And don't feel bad of using your super on the ads. Because this is not a speedrun. And I could not bother myself even doing a speedrun. Alright? It's really hard to do speedruns on console. Let's just be honest with that. As I said before, Grandmasters now is different. So just take your time doing DPS with Arc Stab. And I am so sorry with the light. The light. This is not me, by the way. This is the game. I'm not sure why there was some weird brightness there. That's the game, by the way. That's not my recording. That's not my editing. That is the game. For some reason, the game is being awkward. It's all really, it's all really bright and awkward and weird. Thank the bunch of traveler. I am wearing my glasses with blue lights. It's not hurting my eyes. But for the people who are, don't wear blue light glasses, I apologize for that. That is the game. That is not me. That's Bungie. That's Battlegrounds. All right. So now we're going to be doing DPS at Sephathon. And then here's the best part. You're going to have a so much easier time doing DPS at the last phase. Trust me, after you deal with the two Sephathon, it's a done deal. And now you're probably wondering, where do I go, Blitz? Well, during the last phase, you need to go to the mini cheese spot. Now, as I said, the second DPS phase, see that bush there you see? You go on top of that, on the edge from the right side, well, left side, and crouch. You do DPS on top of that bush during the second DPS. I did show the method on the other footage last month, if anyone's curious how that works. But during the third phase, the final phase, you must go to the mini cheese spot and then you just do dps you don't have to worry about the boss doing arc grenade spamming his arc grenade spamming his lightning strike when it uses its super you must take down this boss as quickly as possible because this boss likes to spam his healing rift that's another thing that people, most people don't understand is you have to do, you have to consistently do DPS, which is why Wish Ender is such a unique, fantastic weapon dealing with the boss. Because if you're using just an auto rifle, even if you're doing precision shots with an auto rifle, the wizard can hide and quickly heal itself. Wish Ender stops from the boss doing, trying to heal itself. Which is why Wish Ender wins for this season. Alright? That's why I'm, I don't recommend you guys even use an auto rifle. And if people are complaining of you using a Wish Ender, well, you know what? Ignore them. Because they have no idea how awkward and how frustrating solo on Battlegrounds is compared to Fireteam. Fire team and solo is very different, but still, people in the fire team have trouble dealing with this battleground. Of course, for solo wise, it's completely different and more harsher and unfair. This is why battlegrounds doesn't belong on the Vanguard playlist. I refuse to even support this, and this is why I'm not gonna use creative loadouts on battleground grandmasters. Now, I really hope people will open their eyes and realize that. Battlegrounds is not a good idea for the Vanguard playlist. And I hope people will shout out and say we want strikes. We want strikes like a garden world. We want strikes like festering core. Trees of probabilities. Will of a thousands. Will of a thousands was never had champions by the way. They never had champions at all. We want strange terrain. We want Destiny 1 strikes. I mean, if they don't have the resources to make new strikes, then bring back the old strikes. Bring back the sunset strikes. Bring back 
the Destiny 1 strikes, and they can rework the Destiny 1 strikes just like they did with Devil's Lair and Fallen Saber. People love Fallen Saber now because it's so farmable and fun. Battlegrounds is not fun and enjoyable or challenging. It's annoying. It's boring. It's long. Infinite amount of ads. No story. Just a long patrol mission-ish. And it's just not a fun, challenging way to even play Battlegrounds, alright? And if people love Battlegrounds so much, which I hope not, they need to have their own little playlist and leave the Vanguard playlist alone. Anyway, that's my rant. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.